Corruption and financial crimes are interwoven. I mean, if you look at a corruption investigation, almost in every aspect there is a transition of, of money, illicit funds. Um, it could be goods and services in exchange, but typically it's uh, financial, and you have to follow the flow of money. And that's when you get into money laundering or structuring for money laundering and where that flow of uh, funding will go. Is it there to support other criminal uh, activities? Or is it there just to line the pockets of the individual that's doing the corruptive you know, activity? And if you're a victim of someone that scams you out of money, of course, uh, financially, you, you lose you know, the, the money there. But it also, uh, as far as like the payment card uh, industry, that there's a, a cost to doing business. And if they incur a certain percentage of fraud loss, they have to pass that on. They're a business. And how do they pass that on? It's to play to the public. And you look at for on the government side too, as far as the, the resources that you have to invest to actually identify and go after the criminals perpetrating these financial crimes. And there's a couple cases recently where um, financial institutions almost went under because of financial crimes that were perpetrated against their institution. Just because the insurance and all that wasn't even high enough to cover as far as the fraud losses. So, uh, I think one of the biggest challenges investigating financial crimes is just the, uh, the flow of communications or the coordination between the private sector and law enforcement. I mean, it's difficult enough if it affects uh, several countries and law enforcement in those several countries have to investigate a financial crime. But when you add the aspect of the private sector being involved with the much needed information of that and have the flow in a timely manner so that law enforcement can respond adequately. Because the private sector, a lot of times, looking for the reputation of the, the company, so they don't want to release information unless they absolutely have to. In law enforcement, we need that information as soon as possible so that we can identify the criminals and then hopefully uh, arrest them. In order to address uh, you know, corruption or financial crime issues, what we've set up is we have a, a workflow messaging system with our member countries. And we have seconded officers here from several different countries in both sections of financial crimes and our anti-corruption program. And they'll review these messages every day, and these are basically coming from our member countries asking for assistance, whether it's with the corruption investigation, to identify assets, how to trace those and eventually recover those assets, or it might be specifically in a financial crimes fraud scheme that they're seeing. Um, seeing if we've heard about that before, other countries that might be affected, and then they'll ask if we can help with case coordination. Uh, Interpol also helps with uh, setting up export working group meetings. Uh, we set up one last year on social engineering fraud that proved to be quite successful. It actually uh, transitioned to an operation that we did last year called Operation First Light that involved six countries in Asia to doing Operation First Light 2015 that involves 23 countries. And it's still ongoing, but right now the uh, success has been uh, very good to date. Um, other things that we do is case coordination. If there's a case that involves several countries, we bring the countries together, the, uh, the investigators and prosecutors together, like we did last year with the unlimited ATM cash out fraud scheme. It was 15 countries, investigators and prosecutors from all those 15 countries got together for two days. And in addition, we had members from the private sector that came in and shared information about how this fraud scheme occurred and then how the, the funds flew, you know, went from one country to the next and then how they were actually laundered in the end. Um, and then we developed what's called best investigative guides or kind of a, a go-to. So if you see a, a fraud scheme that's similar to this, that the country or the investigating agency now has a template of what to do so that they're not losing valuable time in the investigation trying to figure out what the next steps are. We're, we get messages every day from the member countries about what they're seeing for financial crime fraud schemes, uh, asking for assistance in those investigations. We uh, routinely do workshops, uh, training or capacity building training that helps our member countries to um, shore up or strengthen certain aspects of their uh, investigative support that they have. And it might be within uh, money laundering, asset identification, tracing, recovery, uh, to even cyber enable crimes, things like that. So Interpol is kind of the one-stop shop. And in addition, we do case coordination. Um, 
for member countries. If there's a certain financial crime fraud scheme that they want us to help coordinate, then we can help facilitate that. Uh, the stronger that your network is internationally, the more effective that you'll be with addressing financial crimes this day and age. Because a lot of the financial crimes that we're seeing doesn't happen traditionally just in one country and that's it. It usually involves multiple countries. So the stronger that your network is within our member countries, the better chances you'll have in a financial crime investigation.